Hi there, I just found this 50 MHz frequency counter on eBay and it's only £2.50. I know you can get better frequency counters on eBay as well, but they cost a little bit more. And also, this one here is ideal for building into your own equipment. It's basically just a bare PCB with a microchip pick on it and uh, some LED displays. First of all, it only handles frequencies up to 50 MHz. And that is really an issue with ham operators like myself. Secondly, the input levels are either 5V or 3.3V. I haven't ordered this board yet, so I'm not quite sure what voltage the peak chip is running at. But whether it's 3.3V or 5V is still an issue. So what I'm going to do here is to design a front end for this frequency counter. And basically what I have planned is uh, some kind of a divider, a pre-scaler to put in front here. So that it can divide down the actual input frequency by a factor of 10. And also to uh, change the display it's just moving the decimal point, one point to the left. Secondly, I'm going to put some uh, RF amplifier in front so we can have a much lower input signal. What I have in mind is an input signal of about minus 40 dBm uh, or about 2 mV peak to peak. That should be enough for this frequency counter to count reliably. Now I plan to make a PCB for this that is exactly the same size as the PCB we have here because then it can be mounted to the back of this one and we will have a sandwich with a complete frequency counter and that will be very easy to use as a final module in your own project. Now if we take a look at the actual board that we get from eBay it basically consists of one chip which is a PIC 16F628A and uh, this will be handling all the display functionality in software and the actual counting of the frequency will be done in um, the little hardware counter that is built into the chip here. Uh, apart from this chip we have a crystal oscillator with a little capacitive trimmer so that we can um, get the frequency just right and in the lower right corner here we have the reset circuit. Down in this corner here we have a voltage regulator and the DC input and it says DC 5 to 9 volts so my best guess is that this regulator that we have here is a 3.3 volt regulator. Finally, as this is a crystal tester, uh, it has a crystal input. And this is basically just an oscillator made by a single transistor. Uh, and then a little socket where you can plug in different crystals. We don't need that in our circuit. And I think since this is just a kit, we just don't populate these five components here. Or alternatively, there's a nice little connector here. And I think this is possible to just inject our clock signal. Uh, directly into here. But anyway, when I get the board from China, we can have a closer look at that. So next I open up DigiKey and look for the part. And I just simply uh, key in Prescaler and see what comes up. And we have uh, 30 items, uh, so that may be quite interesting. Uh, if we go down here, we see the first one that is available is the MC12080. And uh, this goes up to 1 GHz. It costs $5, so um, yeah, it's alright, but the price is a little bit expensive. Uh, so let's sort by price. And um, we come up with still the same one. The first one we can buy in one piece quantities is the MC12080. So uh, let's click at, on that and uh, get the data sheet from OnSemi. So here we have the data sheet and it says it's a 1.1 GHz prescaler that is available <coughs> that is able to divide by 10. So that is really really cool. Um, goes up to 1.1 GHz and we can of course uh, live with that. The initial spec was 500 MHz. So that is alright. An external load resistor to terminate the output, 820 ohm recommended to achieve 1.2 volt swing on the output. Okay, so we are not getting TTL output from this chip, uh, but that can be handled uh, with a single transistor to uh, just get the levels correct. So that is not a big problem. Otherwise, 1.1 gigahertz, uh, 5 volt supply, low power operating temperature, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, uh, is there anything we need to take care of in this chip? Have the logic diagram, and that looks fine. It's basically just a divide by 10. Uh, the circuit diagram, 
power supply, ground, the output needs the 820 ohm resistor to give 1.2 volt swing out. Uh, differential input needs termination externally by 50 ohm, which is no problem. Um, and then we have here, what does it say? Input signal amplitude versus input frequency. So um, yeah, we have an operating window. That is what we need to be within. So basically our amplitude needs to be between uh, minus 6 dBm and plus 4 dBm. Uh, or somewhere around here, what does it say? Um, it's about 100 millivolts RMS to uh, 350 millivolts RMS. Um, so we need to be within that uh, input level if we need to go down to somewhere around 100 megahertz. So yeah, that is the limitation for this chip. Otherwise it looks nice, the frequency is fine, the package is SO8, uh, SOIC8, which is fine, and uh, yeah, that looks good. Let's use that for our design. So next we have to find an amplifier. Remember I said I needed about 40 dB gain in this uh, circuit here. And I'm a very big fan of the BGA614 from Infineon. This is a Mimic amplifier and uh, I used it a lot and it's always stable. I never had any oscillation or weird stuff like that so as long as you lay out the PCB uh, correctly. Basically a Mimic is an amplifier in a chip and uh, you don't really have to do much to make it work except for some input and output conditioning. Uh, if we take a look here, it's, uh, it has 50 ohm in and 50 ohm out, so that is uh, really easy to use. It also has a 3 dB bandwidth of 2.4 GHz, so that is no problem. And it has a gain of 19 dB at 1 GHz. So it's very very useful for our application here. So yeah, I'm just going to draw it directly into the circuit. And of course I need 40 dB gain, so I need two stages for this. If you need more gain, you can simply just cascade them the way I do here, and just add one more stage. Uh, because they have 50 ohm in and 50 ohm out, so there's no loss or any uh, reflections in the circuit. So just add more stages if you need more gain. As you can see, I've left a gap in the circuit here between the Mimix and the Prescaler. And the reason is that we need to clamp the input to the prescaler. As we saw earlier, it only works from about 100 millivolts up to about uh, 400 millivolts RMS. And that corresponds to somewhere between 300 and 800 millivolts peak to peak. So the easiest way to achieve that is simply to clamp the output from the Mimic. And uh, we do that by inserting a couple of diodes. And of course we cannot clamp the output from the Mimic directly. It would blow the transistors internally. So we need to put a small resistor in series. And uh, here I chose 10 ohm, but it might be okay to use 50 or something like that uh, without any problems. Finally, it would also be nice to have some protection on the input side before the mimics. And I'm doing that the same way, by simply clipping the input signal with a pair of diodes. However, the difference here is that I still need 50 ohm on the input side, uh, whether the diodes are clipping or not. And I do that by adding a small uh, attenuator at the input. Calculating a 50 ohm attenuator is a little bit tricky. But luckily there's a website that can calculate this for me. So I simply enter uh, 50 ohm as my uh, impedance and 3 dB for my attenuation and then I click calculate. And then I get the resistors uh, roughly 18 ohms here on this resistor and uh, 300 ohms on these two here to ground. So I will take this circuit and add, and then I'm done. And yeah, that's it really. Uh, in another video, I will be building this circuit on a prototype PCB and check out the performance. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and uh, see you again real soon.